Welcome to the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed show with your spicy hosts, Tara and Sylvie. We show up every episode to expose, uncover, and share what we know about SEX. This isn't what you'll find in your typical sex ed class. Juicy sex talk is under discussed, and we are doing what we can to change that. Sex is evolving. People are empowered more than ever to detach from cultural norms and design the sex life they crave. And if you are looking for more info after the show, we absolutely invite you to get social. Our Instagram is the b.sexed.show, and we would love for you to give us a follow. So today we have psychology student and intimacy coach Heather Fry. Heather is currently a third year graduate student in Southern Methodist University's counseling program, working towards completion of her master's degree. She is passionate about sexual and relational counseling and has completed training as a sex and intimacy coach through the Somatica Institute. As a member of the LGBTQIA plus community, she is committed to finding creative ways to serve and support others in the group. In November 2022, she debuted her work on sexual identity support for queer women in heterosexual passing relationships as a poster project at the TCA conference in Dallas, Texas. Heather hopes to continue her education to earn a doctorate degree and become a counselor educator. Thanks, Sylvie. And before we get into this juicy discussion, just want to take a moment for our land acknowledgement. This is the space we sit, so let's acknowledge that. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, play, and are recording this episode on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy and Stony Nakoda Nations and Métis Region 3. We just want to acknowledge all of the people who make their homes on the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Welcome, Heather. (laughs) Oh, hi. Is there anything that maybe you want to share or elaborate on that we discussed in the intro? I think you mostly covered it. My latest, the latest thing I guess I did with the same research from November was uh, giving a one hour workshop to uh, mental health counselors mostly marriage and family therapists in Austin, Texas in the early part of March of this year. So that was really fun to kind of broaden the research and expand it a little bit. So Heather, why is this research so important to you? Uh, It's really personally important to me because I am a queer woman in a straight, long-term straight relationship and have been for going on, you know, not the same relationship, but going on 25 or so years, mostly in all straight relationships. And I really just recently, I'm, I'm about to turn 41 on Thursday, actually, Woo-hoo. but uh, yes. I didn't come out publicly as bisexual till I was 36. And so this has just been kind of an area of exploration for me. How did that go when you came out at age 36? Well, uh, my husband really already knew. We had talked about it, you know, before. And I really kind of, I really started exploring a lot of this when I was going through the somatica training. I remember one class was like, "Uh, what would you, what, what do you like about sex? And I was like, what do you mean? (laughs) Like, I never thought about that before. What do I like about sex? And so and all that exploration, my husband and I were having lots of talks and we, I mean, he knew it wasn't a secret for him and my people close, my daughter knew some friends, but uh, coming out publicly was, I mean, a little bit scary, but all in all, it ended up being kind of a non-event. I think, I mean, you're in good company here because both Tara and I are also bisexual women in long-term heterosexual relationships. Tara, did you have a big coming out moment at any point or do you want to talk about your history being a bisexual woman in a heterosexual world like I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world kind of thing I think it was pretty clear that I was bisexual from a young age I would be in high school like kissing my girlfriends and being intimate with them a little bit more than just friends but I always always dated guys I never dated women And there was one particular relationship with a guy. And one night I went home with two of my girlfriends and we had like 
the sexiest play night together and I've never played with women before like to that level and I felt bad it was it felt like cheating it was cheating like let's be honest and after that I kind of realized maybe that relationship wasn't right for me because that was something that he didn't want me to explore and he didn't want to acknowledge and shortly after that we we broke up and Luckily, I ended up finding another guy and 10 years in, you know, he fully supports that. <laughs> so, but yeah, I kind of knew from the beginning. I just didn't know that it was something I really needed to feel fulfilled and like thrive with my sexuality. That's cool. And also, I mean, it's it's interesting because we were making an assumption here, right, that that supporting someone's bisexuality means letting them act on it. Heather, is that necessarily true? No, it's not necessarily true. A lot of the research, I like kind of the project that I did and the research that I've done were all in to create a support group for queer women kind of exploring their sexuality. And it was kind of based on this Facebook group that I joined when I was exploring my own uh, married bisexual women and something like that, I think. I can't remember the exact name of it, but um, I saw people over and over posting kind of the same ideas, like, am I hurting my husband? I don't really want to be with women, but this is just a part of me that I feel like I need to be able to put out there. Some husbands are into it for various reasons. Um, Some are not at all. Um, And so it's definitely not a requirement. And it's not even a requirement, I don't think, for some bisexual people to even be able to carry out this exploration. Um, Not everybody wants to. Some people, I think, just really want to be able to say it. Yeah, that's huge. I actually have a girlfriend who's been married for, I think they're on their 15 year wedding anniversary. And she's like, yeah, I'm bisexual. And I'm like, I had no idea. (laughs) What? She's like, yeah, like, I don't really feel the need to be intimate with women, but I enjoy like going out and being in community with women. And that's all she needed to feel satisfied and acknowledged. That's amazing. Yeah. I think when I came, well, like I said before, coming out was kind of a non-event and when you're a bisexual person in a relationship with an opposite sex person, you pretty much just have to come out every day. I mean, it just feels like a constant process. It's like every time someone meets me, they see I have a ring, you know, they ask if I'm married, I'm married to a man. And it's just an assumption across the board that I must be straight. So I have like a pop socket that I got that says, I just look straight. I wear rainbow shoes. I have a rainbow unicorn tattoo. (laughs) Like, any outward expressions where I don't have to come out verbally, like every time I meet a new person. (laughs) I agree. I love wearing rainbow for that exact reason. (laughs) Sylvie knows. (laughs) I, you know, I think I just got stuck in like the teenage goth phase and I just have a huge aversion to wearing rainbows. I'm I'm wearing all black right now. And that is pretty much my daily standard is just all black. But then I think like most of the goth girls were either gay or bisexual. So (laughs) I I feel like I, you know, you don't have to be rainbow to be gay. I feel like I just want to put that out there as well. Like express yourself all in black if you need to. And you can still be a perfectly good bisexual. (laughs) You have the purple hair, Sylvie. That's true. I have purple hair. (laughs) Right, right. I I do not have the septum piercing, which I've heard is like a surefire way to know if someone is bisexual, if they have the nose ring. My body reacts so negatively to piercings. I have been thinking about, but then I was like, what if it doesn't go well and my nose is just like inflamed or something? (laughs) I mean, yeah, you mentioned something earlier about knowing for a long time that you're bisexual. I'm just wondering, like, Sylvie, did you feel the same way? Did you know? Did you feel like you knew from a young age? I absolutely knew from a young age. I've been trying lately to wonder what age it was that I actually figured it out. I knew I really liked boys. There was a boy in particular. My mom never lets me live this down. She says that I wrote his name in the uh, grouting 
of the tiles in the bathroom and that when they tried to sell the house and they moved all of the bathroom rugs they could just see this guy's name it was like she said there was just Niels written in like in all the grouting of like and I was like oh shit and she was like god that was she was like how old were you when you did that and I was like I think I did it all the way from age like eight till age like 14 to be honest but I definitely liked boys a lot and then I also had and that was it was harder for me to understand what it was from a young age I just really wanted girls to be my best 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 friend and no amount of their friendship was ever enough like no amount of their time was enough no amount of closeness was enough and I would become quite possessive and uh, obsessive about my girlfriends from a very young age and I think it was only probably around age 13 or 14 that I managed to make the connection with oh I actually have sexual feelings towards girls because I just didn't I think also when when I grew up in the 80s and 90s it wasn't normal to Mm -hmm. see examples of uh, lesbianism or queer women in general and I don't think I understood what a girl could possibly want from another girl I -hmm. understood what girls and boys did together but I don't think I understood what girls and girls could do together and so therefore I just kind of had this blank in my mind until I think I turned about 14 and then I think I got called a lesbian many times in school as an insult and it was so shaming and the internet had just come out. Uh, so I think I probably, I didn't Google it because there was no Google. I think I altivisted it uh, to find out what lesbianism was. And um, and I was like, oh, I think, I think I am that. But then I would tell myself, but no, I like boys too. So what am I? And it was a big confusion for a long time. Yeah. A long time. The confusion's real. Like I would say I didn't know I was bisexual till I was in my 20s. Like I didn't mm-hmm. know. I just knew I liked women, but I didn't know that meant I was bisexual. Yeah. Yeah. We. I was talking about it the other day with my professor because a lot of my friends have that experience of like, one of my friends says, well, I would like every boy that my friends liked. They'd say he's hot. And I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, he is hot. And then they would try to date him. So I would date him first. And like, I, I remember being kind of afraid of women most of my life and never really understanding them. Um, I would have like these one-off, like very close friends all through high school. And I do remember my freshman year of high school, my best friend and I were cheerleaders together. We were very close. We, I mean, it was never anything, but just like two people. I mean, we loved each other. We were very close. We were close with, I was really close with her mom and still have been. But, you know, after cheerleading camp, everyone called me a lesbian. And so I stopped being friends with her. Aww. This reminds me of Mean Girls. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from a very small rural town. Uh, of, it's like 800 people. And so, oddly enough, nobody in that town <laughs> was gay when but. they lived there. <laughs> so <laughs> odd. So they moved away. <laughs> But I think I remember just like being like all my friends like boys and I like boys and I think girls are great, but all my friends have girlfriends too. So that must be normal. And it was like in my maybe 20s or 30s being like, yeah, but you love the way boobs look, right? Because boobs are pretty and boys are yucky looking. Their bodies are gross. And people were like, oh, no, that's not how I feel about that at all. And I was like, oh, hmm, weird. Yeah, it's it is quite a learning process and I I remember actually when I first met my now husband and I was very young I knew that it was not okay my parents definitely sat me down to tell me that being gay was not okay Uh, they took a look at all of my Alanis Morissette posters and my Buffy the Vampire Slayer posters and said do you want photos of boys and I said no thanks and they said well these must come down these are not acceptable and are you are you like that? And I was like, am I like what? And they were like, do you like girls? And I was like, uh, and they were like, because if you do, that would be a real problem for us. And so I, I realized very early on that that was an absolute no-go at home. And when I met my my current partner at age 17, I remember thinking, he's so nice and he's so cute and he's so friendly and I could spend the rest of my life with him and 
no one will bother me ever again about being a lesbian. Mm -hmm. And that was really my first thought when I Mm -hmm. met him. I think it took me a good couple of years to realize that I actually loved him. And then after that, I think I thought, I just love him as a person, not as a guy. And it's pretty clear to me that I'm still this lesbian, right? Because I had this, I had these negative slurs that had been, well, being lesbian is not a negative slur, but it, the way it was thrown at me right? in, yeah. in the 90s, it was kind of like, ew, you're a lesbian. And I, I internalized that and I was like, I guess I am, but I found this person who I love and it doesn't matter what gender he is. And I kind of just forgot about it after that. And I was like, well, I'm a lesbian who found a male bodied person who I love. And I think coming into my bisexuality, like you, Heather, probably was much later in my 30s that I was probably like, oh, I am bisexual. I absolutely fantasize about men and I'm attracted to men and I am so attracted to women. And that's legit. Like that feeling Mm -hmm. of that's legit. Like sometimes that still kind of takes my breath away. Mm hmm. It's not surprising that everyone in this room is bisexual because it's actually the biggest portion of the lgbtq acronym i think it's over 50 percent of lgbtq people identify as bisexual and the numbers are really going up i think i have i I pulled up the research so i could give you accurate numbers so i wouldn't just be saying random things here but for millennials about six percent report being bisexual gen x just two percent but of adults that have entered or Gen Z who have entered adulthood, it's already at 15%. So, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just so much more informed, I think, and they have oh, access yeah. to so much more information. It's like sometimes, I mean, it's just a matter of vocabulary. Like, if you had heard the word bisexual and not lesbian thrown at you as an insult, it might have right. made more sense to you. But it's just not that lack of access to knowledge yeah. for 80s and 90s kids. It's true. Absolutely. And then even as I was claiming my bisexuality, and I don't know if that's the case for you, Tara, as well, but I felt like around the time when I was getting comfortable with the label bisexual, people were coming out with, oh, I'm pansexual. And I was like, well, what the fuck is that? Like, wait, am I something else then? Like, yeah. you know, and, and then it was like, well, I just claimed this. I just got comfortable with this label of bisexual. And now maybe I have to come to terms with another one. Oh gosh, that's a lot. (laughs) Isn't bisexual like the umbrella of what pansexual would live under? I think bisexual is like attraction to one or more genders. So there, I I remember when I was kind of first coming out and kind of coming to terms, there was kind of a little bit of like, mm, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like a nice word, but little hate for bisexuals because it was kind of saying that they were uh anti-trans and like not uh they were like bisexual being I'm attracted to men I'm attracted to women right and then but I think the real definition of bisexuality is attraction to one more than one gender so it can be inclusive of any gender or any gender orientation you could be attracted to even more than two genders so yeah so can you tell us what some stereotypes there are around bisexuality yeah I have a funny list of all of them that I included in the thing but one of the biggest ones actually comes from the gay and lesbian community that they're by now gay later or sometimes the other way like it's well generally for men they're by now gay later Uh, if you have a bisexual man they just assume they're not really ready to come out yet And for women, it goes the opposite direction. They're bi now, but they're actually just straight. They're kind of just experimenting uh, in a phase or the other like insidious unicorn hunters who are just looking for like a little fun for their husband and them. So other things are just like they're, well, being promiscuous is like a huge part of it that they can't, like they're just nymphomaniacs who just want sex from anyone, anytime. And they might actually be, but they could have been that way if they were straight too. I mean, some people just really have a higher sex drive. It actually has nothing to do with bisexuality. And then sometimes I think like one of the hard ones for me to think about is like from the, the gay and lesbian community, 
feeling like we bisexuals, uh, and especially in relationships with opposite sex partners, are just trying to hide behind like heterosexual privilege. Yeah. And a lot of feedback I got in my uh, when I did my talk in March from the bisexual women who are in heterosexual partnerships in the room were saying, you know, some of my gay friends will tell me that I have this privilege, but it doesn't feel like a privilege to me all the time, the heterosexual privilege. It feels a lot like erasure. Like they see it as a privilege and I see it as erasure. Like I'm constantly having to come out. I'm constantly not having my sexuality like identified in me or like seen. And to me, it doesn't really feel as much like a privilege as it does like a hardship, but you know. Those all make sense to me. (laughs) I can relate. (laughs) What's the one that you relate to the hardest, Tara? I think the, the privilege the privilege aspect of being in a straight passing relationship. And like, I, I do agree there is privilege in it, but then I also agree that there's also another layer of work that I have to do for myself in order to feel like I'm acknowledging who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have had probably the most hateful experiences from lesbians Mm -hmm. right I think I think straight people mostly leave me alone they have mostly just left me alone and just they're like oh okay whatever but I think lesbians do sort of have had I had a pretty bad experience once at a a gay club where uh, somebody bought me a drink and I said no thank you and they insisted and so I had the drink and then afterwards they wanted to make out and I did not want to make out. And they were like, wow, you're just a fucking straight girl just in here trying to get drinks from us le- real lesbians. And now you're just going to like, and I was like, no, I didn't even, I didn't even want that drink. Like I didn't even want it. I was just sitting here. You batted me for the drink. And then the abuse and then several other lesbians came up and they were just like, what's this straight girl doing in here? And she's just baiting us. And she just, wants us to like fall for her and then she's going to go back to her straight world and that was like quite a traumatic incident and I like Mm -hmm. it still stays with me and I do feel pretty uncomfortable actually in the company of lesbians who are just very definitive about their lesbian identity because I always feel like they're looking at me and thinking you're just pretending to be something that we've had to fight really hard for Mm -hmm. And I think it does. There is erasure there because there has been a lot of pain in like not not being able to claim a full identity and being able to, you know, be out and proud in one direction or another. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of, you know, not realizing that not being sure of your identity can be just as painful as being sure of your identity. Yeah, you're never gay enough. You're never straight enough. I had not as that sounds horrible and super scary. I I, I had not a, a similar ish experience when I went to a drag show with my husband. Like I sh- I'd come out shortly after I had come out publicly, and I don't really have like a gay community, like a queer community. And so we were in Key West, and we went to a drag show. And the, the drag queen comes out and they're, they're giving all the like, oh, hey, to the straight people, hey, to the gay people, hey, to the lesbians, like giving all these shout outs. And I'm just like waiting for my time to cheer, which never came. So, uh, you know, after the drag queen came around, I was like, hey, when you're giving shout outs, don't forget about bisexuals. And he and he was like, oh, honey, no, girls are only bisexual when they're drunk. And I was just like, to, I don't know, to just feel that in that moment, I was just taken aback because it's like, I should probably, first of all, seek some sort of help for my drinking problem. <laughs> and I have been drunk for several years now. Uh, like, <laughs> this might be serious. But also like, what are you saying? Like, I was, I was feeling like here I am in my community. And, and then it's like, oh, no, you're not a part of, you're not a part of us. So Hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's incredibly hurtful, both of your experiences. 
Yeah, well, there's, you know, there's those labels like spaghetti straight, like girls are, you know, straight until they get wet. And then, you know, it's, and there's a lot of those. I have never heard that before. What? (laughs) You've never heard the spaghetti straight thing? (laughs) That is something that I have heard several times. Me too. And and it it is. I only eat rotini, guys. Okay. That's (laughs) twisted all the time. (laughs) It's all twisted. (laughs) But, but straight people aren't coming up with these things. Straight people aren't coming up with these hurtful analogies and hurtful things. Like this is coming from from the LGBTQIA plus community. And mm-hmm. I think that that feels hurtful and a bit like a betrayal because it's like, well, we're in there. We're in the lettering. So why would you make us feel unwelcome? Mm-hmm. So it it does feel like we don't have a home because straight people are kind of like, ew like why are you in our locker room kind of okay we'll tolerate you and like let's just not talk about it and gay people are like get out go to your side and Mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. oh okay well I know where I feel definitely unwelcome as opposed to just tolerated which is I feel pretty tolerated by straight people for the most part but I don't always feel tolerated in gay spaces yeah I think I mean that probably attributes to how like I think 26 or something percent of bisexual people just don't come out to even the closest the people closest to them in their lives especially if you're in a straight passing relationship you know why what are you gaining from it but I mean some might say you know it's hard to feel like in any relationship you're truly having in any intimate relationship platonic or otherwise it's hard to feel like you're truly being seen when they're only seeing a portion of your identity and coming out has such a big like being seen in that fully as a as a person you are and your sexual orientation and all of that has such a big it's such a big piece of mental health and it's just really difficult for you if you can't express yourself fully in every way like to be mentally okay I think yeah so I was going to ask you about that I mean, talking about the mental health challenges, is that one of the major challenges that bisexual women face? Are there other challenges that we might not be aware of that bisexual women face? There are a lot of challenges. I was working on this project with a friend at the the time. She just wrote on an index card, bisexuals have it rough. And I was like, okay, we should probably like clarify just a little bit more than that. But for mood and and anxiety disorders, they're roughly twice as likely as heterosexual and lesbian counterparts to have mood disorders. And they're twice as likely to be subject to intimate partner violence, bisexual women. Wow. Than heterosexual. That's huge. Yeah. It's like kind of staggering. I have, and like I said, again, I don't like to just say these numbers without like having the actual numbers on it. But when I saw the numbers on intimate partner violence, I was just kind of shocked by it. I was looking for it. Yeah, I, there's some numbers that say half of bi women have experienced rape in their lifetime. 75% of bi women in the U.S. have reported experience, experiencing sexual violence. And I mean, the numbers across board here are kind of upsetting because 46% of lesbians and 43% of heterosexual women have experienced sexual violence in their lifetime mm-hmm. but it's just 25 percent over 25 percent more likely if you're bisexual and so I mean we're facing mental health crisis uh, we're we're facing intimate partner violence we're facing sexual abuse more often than our heterosexual and lesbian counterparts wow that's huge that's very unfortunate and there's probably the least amount of support for mm-hmm bisexual woman in that yeah because if you you know experience something like that you go to your community but where is ours right do we have one uh maybe it's ourselves you know I I saw a funny meme the other day that said bisexuals might be the invisible majority but they certainly aren't the silent one (laughs) (laughs) oh my god I love that I'm writing it down (laughs) like yeah I'm sure everyone who was in my class this weekend was like please Heather do not say bisexual again and it's like I just want everyone to know (laughs) it's really hard out here for us yeah so what is hot and what is hard about being a bi woman in a heterosexual relationship 
I mean, I feel like for some people it can be like, you know, uh, I am not open to being open maybe. And so it's a part of me that I feel want people to know about, but it's not something that I can ever really truly explore. And like, I have friends who are bisexual who didn't come out until they were married and they aren't interested in exploring it. So they've never actually had experiences, which is another difficult thing, finding a way to own the identity without like real experience and just questioning that. Um, but I think that can be a huge aspect, like coming out, realizing this thing and kind of retrospect after you're married and not having the opportunity to ever explore could be difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tara, what about for you? What's hard and what's hard about being bi in a heterosexual relationship? My TikTok is pretty hot. <laughs> um, the algorithm knows I'm bi for sure. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> TikTok is constantly calling me out. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the TikTok where the lesbian protection guard when you're having to have sleep. TikTok. Okay. It's when you're having a sleepover with your straight friend and you're by and they put the lesbian protection guard, which is their pillow in between you. And I'm like, oh my God, that's been my straight friends before. <laughs> like no judgment. They're just like, okay, I'm just gonna put this here. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but in reality, what's hot? I think just the freedom to be who I am un unapologetically and we have an open relationship but that doesn't like I haven't been with a woman probably in like three years like so it's not a requirement for me but it's nice to to just even have that community and a place to talk with other women and know that in the non-monogamous community I I can find that pretty easily to talk and relate what's hard is probably like the daily life of like like what you said Heather with having to always like come out and that's probably why I resort to wearing rainbow and being a little bit more on that level because I don't want to always be assumed that I'm normal because that's just boring that I'm normal <laughs> normal I was like oh no that word normal yeah I like to trouble the normal so I I want people to be curious like hmm is she gay or what what's going on here I just bought a t-shirt that says I'm here to fuck your wife and <laughs> I have yet plucked up the courage to wear it in public but I've got it and it's like sitting like on the chair next to my bed and I'm like one of these mornings I'm gonna wear this and walk around outside and see yeah. how that feels you can do it by degrees wear, wear a sweater over it the first time you can just like open or close depending on your feelings well I do have a sweater that says both teams on it and every time I wear it I just get people going go sports and I'm like <laughs> yeah no you misunderstand you misunderstand this sweatshirt like what what does sports have to do with this I guess it's like you know both teams because like I guess I'm in the Bay Area so there's like the Niners and the Raiders or there's like the A's and the Giants like I guess like <laughs> oh you support both of our Bay Area teams cool it's like no <laughs> wow this this is a lady who loves sports <laughs> I mean, bisexuals do like their sports, to be fair. Oh, I guess I'm, I'm out then. Maybe I'm not <laughs> bi. <laughs> I that like was sports. just a blatant generalization. <laughs> I like to sit weird in chairs. I know that's one of them. Like the more fun, like uh, bisexual stereotypes. I, I do always sit weird in chairs. I never sit with my feet on the floor. So maybe that that was really how I knew that's how you knew <laughs> telltale yeah. from there it's like I never sit normally I, I think I saw I think I saw a reel about this bisexual <laughs> sit weird and so that must be me because I'm always sitting weird I'm sitting weird right now <laughs> are you sitting, sitting weird, weird Sylvie I probably am and also I was gonna say though like isn't it just the thumbs up or the finger guns that tells you whether you're finger bisexual? Guns, yeah. Finger I mean, guns. I don't do finger guns. Do you do um, thumbs less... up to people? I do thumbs up all the time. I do. And I've I've been told that's a very bisexual thing. Someone maybe says that to me own, and I'm like, you yeah. know, maybe <laughs> Matt, my husband, maybe he's bisexual because he's a thumbs upper. <laughs> <laughs> to really explore this. I'm going to have him do a Kinsey test. <laughs> it, 
it's so fun that it's so funny the kinds of things that we tell ourselves are indications of sexuality when Mm -hmm. again it's just like it's trying to put people in a box and it's trying to tell people like oh if you do this it means that and I think you know all of this has just if if someone just tuned into these five minutes and they were like oh my god these people have no idea about bisexuality like tongue-in-cheek this is tongue-in-cheek right like we're not saying that if you do finger guns you are 1000 percent bisexual although you're probably a little bit bisexual you might be a douchebag but you're definitely not (laughs) not definitely bisexual (laughs) sorry sorry sorry. no i mean it's it's true but i I just think it's it's funny i mean i remember people also in school telling me that if one of your fingers was longer like what was it the, the the index finger if it was longer than the other fingers then you were definitely a lesbian and I remember yeah, spending I a, a long time, like looking in the, like looking at my fingers and being like, "Am I definitely a lesbian?" Am I yeah, we're not? like, let's compare. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these. Is these it because you just... need your fingers more? I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, what about nails? Like when you color your nails a specific way? No, or if they're short. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say if you keep them short, maybe. The woman in my nail parlor says that to me all the time. She says, like, because I, because when she, because I do sexological body work, right? So I need my nails to be short. Mm -hmm. Um, But whenever I come in and and she sees a wedding ring on my finger and she goes, you don't need short nails. And I'm like, why? And she's like, you're married to a man. And I'm like, yeah, but I still want short nails. And she goes, oh. (laughs) And then like, I'm just like, wait, do you have like, are you judging me on my short nails because you don't actually believe I'm married to a man? Like, what is this? Like, and I feel it from her every time I go in. She's just like, oh, why don't you try long nails? And I'm like, no, thank you. Yeah. I don't have long nails because they are annoying and I hate them. I mean, that's mostly just my reason. I don't have any other real good reason for it. I, I have many lesbian friends who have beautiful long nails and they tell me that it, it doesn't bother them whatsoever and they can fuck just fine with their long nails. I yeah. don't want long nails going near my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. I've had it. Like, I'm not being judgmental. It scared me. <laughs> I've, I've had <laughs> long talons in my pussy and I'm like, no, I can't relax. <laughs> Uh, I think you just have to take better care to wash the underneath them to like not have a ton of bacteria under these long nails. I think that's, that's a lot that's too. Not a selling point. <laughs> that that's it. Also, I that wasn't even what I was thinking of, but I was thinking they were gonna like rupture my cervix or something. Or I was scared. Yeah. But let's let's Make talk a little bit about up. bisexuality and families. I know that Heather, you have kids. I also have kids. Tara, you don't have kids, but no, nope. um, but th- it is kind of like, you know, and also, you know, parents and whatever else, do you feel the need to come out to your family at all? And what in your, ha- what did your research show about whether people who feel bisexual, but they're in straight passing relationships, what did, what did you come up with in terms of, do they feel a need to come out to their families or not? Well, that it is true. Bisexual women are more likely to be parents. I think I got the stats from 2016, uh, the Movement Advancement Project, was six, like around 60% of bisexual women are parents. And lesbians were only about 31%, and uh, gay men were about 16% to be parents. And so the, the chances of a bisexual woman having kids are way higher. I have five children. Wow. Um, I'm just out here. I've got children for you, so you don't have to even worry about it. I have <laughs> enough for all of us. <laughs> I was doing the most for that statistic. So I think it just goes to show that just because you see a person married to a man with kids, I mean, don't assume that they're straight. And then I did a little more, I did a little research on like just kind of how often. A bisexual person would be in a relationship with the opposite sex compared to gay men and lesbians. And gay men and lesbians are in opposite sex relationships two and one percent of the time, while bisexuals are in opposite sex relationships 84 percent of the time. So it is highly likely that a bisexual person would be in a relationship with an opposite sex partner. Wow. I don't know why that is maybe that's just some of the 
heteronormativity, like, because we do like both, it maybe it's just a little bit easier to mm-hmm. be in a relationship with, I mean, it's what we're taught easier, you know, I think I always say it's, I mean, it's obvious that sexuality is not a choice because if I could choose, I would never be in a relationship with a man. I would be like much more likely and to be in a relationship with a woman. It's just, it's just a different level of care there. I think that you don't get sometimes. And, and Matt, my husband is incredibly supportive and wonderful. I mean, he's as close to a lesbian as I think I could ever get with a man. So. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to listen to this. I'm sure he's heard it before. <laughs> There's a comedian called Catherine Bohart, who is bisexual. And she said that during the pandemic, she was a lesbian by choice. Because during the early days of the pandemic, when you could only meet people in parks and you had to be able to trust them that they had washed their hands, she wasn't <laughs> going to take that risk with men. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's I thought funny. that was valid. I always say if there's something that happened in my relationship and I wasn't with my partner anymore, I would be dating women. Yeah, I think same for me too. I don't think I would find another man who had like, yeah, who had the qualities that I wanted in a relationship. I yeah. really honestly don't think so. I yeah. think that, you know, Tara, we we interviewed you, your partner uh, and, you know, on breaking down the patriarchy and, and what a self-aware man they are. And I know that my partner also is, you know, probably as close to a, a woman emotionally as I could ever hope for. Right. Um, and again, it's just, you know, I we see these male behaviors out there in the world. And every time I see them, I just think, mm, no, thank you. Like, I I would like to sleep with you, but I don't think I would want to live with you. Mm-hmm. There's actually a lifestyle podcaster duo. I don't know if you've heard of Torrid Souls. And it's two women who are bisexual who were married previously to men, found each other in the lifestyle, are now together. And you like they find they go on like gay cruises and stuff. And like you, like they'll invite men into their bedroom, but only play together as women. It's pretty fascinating that all these different ways that you can be, especially these days, there's so many different offerings out there and if you're willing to get creative and deconstruct the the normal I mean you can find what makes you happy I believe that at least I think deconstructing that heteronormative like idea is huge and can be really hard and like in our case we're I have been married almost as many times as I have kids. So I'm on my, this is my third husband and I, third time's a charm. So he is a really great guy, but he's also divorced. And so like in like the thoughts of like being o- openly open, it's, it can be scary for someone who's divorced. Cause you know, what if your ex partners go after your kid's because of some because of something like that because the mm-hmm. courts offer no protection for people who are in open relationships polyamorous people I mean if you want to talk about a population of people that is marginalized I think it's alternative relationship styles even more so I mean there's what I mean that's a real lack of community legal support legal protection and so there's so many things out there that you can be but it's like, is it always safe to be all of them, I guess? Yeah, the yeah. States is definitely a little bit harsher with that stuff. I know there is, there are groups that do offer that support for people in the U.S. specifically. I'll try and find it. Because you know I live in Texas, right? I do. Yes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh. oh, It's another country of its in its own right. Uh, I not really anymore but it's yeah got its, it's got its charms heather tell me a little bit about therapy for 
or bisexuals in straight passing relationships? Does therapy feel supportive for the most part? Is there any are there any particular types of therapy that tend to work better for our population than for others? Tell me a little bit about that. I think for me, my kind of I, I did some study on this and some conceptualization of you know the issues. And one of the huge issues is lack of community. And so I really think that um, and what I'm kind of pushing for or hoping for or trying to like bring to the forefront in the mental health profession is really finding a way to create support groups for bisexual women. So and when you're not able because because we are invisible and you might know, like you said, you you knew a mom or a person, not a mom, but a person who was married 15 years or something. And when they said they're bisexual, you're like, what? The whole time you guys could have been connecting on that, but you didn't know. Mm-hmm. So um, creating support groups that would give a space for bisexual people to meet and know each other. And I think it would be kind of nice for like people in all different stages of their sexual exploration to be able to meet and provide support. Like those people just starting to question and people who've been bisexual forever all their lives and have known it since they were kids. And just kind of like creating like a sense of universality and like commonality and just to go and be able to be in a place where you can talk about things like but boobs are cute too right and everyone will go yeah boobs are great you know boobs are great I don't know how anyone could not like them I just don't get it (laughs) what other things do groups help with uh groups can help with so much Intimate partner violence being one of the main aspects of lack of safety for bisexual women, a lot of that can kind of be involved in kind of an abusive relationship and that can create a, like a lot of isolation. And so if you get a woman who's in a relationship like that into a group, you know, she might be able to find support and help, not necessarily to get out of it, but because there's all kinds of privilege around being able to get out of abusive relationships too, but at least to not feel so isolated and to find a community. And sometimes I think it really is just about knowing that you're not alone and just being able to like have that hope instilled in you that things are like this right now, but they don't have to be. And being in community with people like you can instill hope better, I think, than anything else. Tara, do you have any other questions for Heather? Mm. Are there any like resources or books or podcasts maybe that you know about that if reaching out to community is a little bit too much or too intense for somebody right now that like a book I'm thinking? I get asked that here and there. The book I used for a ton of my research is uh, called Life Isn't Binary and lovely oh I love that it is I mean it's it's not just it doesn't just cover by, uh, sexuality it covers a lot of different aspects of just life and because in so many places in life we're con- we consider it like life to just be on a binary and and it's not always just an either or I was looking for who wrote that book Ian, the, the last names are Ian Toffee and Barker, but it's called Life Isn't Binary on Being Both, Beyond, and In Between. And it is, I thought that book was amazing. I I do the graduate program book club for my counseling program at SMU, and I had that be our book for last semester because I loved it so much. That's great. I haven't read it, but it sounds like exactly what somebody might need who's listening to this podcast. Yeah, it's really great. I enjoyed it. Sounds great. I wish there was more representation as well on, you know, again, on TV and movies that we yeah. see. Yeah. We'd see some more bisexual. I mean, I I love watching Love Island. I know. Please don't judge me. It's horrible. And I'm constantly just wishing that they would just throw some bisexuals in there to just make it more interesting. I mean, it's just, I don't understand yeah. how we're in 2023. And all of our reality TV series, all of them are still There is one. I just saw one too. Are You the One? I think it's called Are You the One? They did a whole season where everyone in the house was bisexual. It was 
madness and absolute chaos and the best the best what was that called i need to write this i think it's called it was i think i watch a lot of really really amazing great dating shows but i'm pretty sure the one that had the bisexual season was are you the one i'm googling it i just watched (laughs) perfect match and there was two bisexual women on there who are the yes yes yeah francesca Francesca i just watched it and um the person from uh something about your 20s austin oh yeah and the and the blonde one too oh so there's three uh carousel carousel yes Mm -hmm. uh it's the eighth season are you the Uh, one season eight are you the one yes it's an entirely bisexual cast and it is chaos (laughs) non-stop chaos just i can't wait to watch that i'm gonna have to finish up love island and get on that right away yeah we're all on these like corny (laughs) reality (laughs) okay that's a bye thing (laughs) (laughs) Last night I was telling my husband and guns. a new a new season of Love is Blind came out and we haven't even started watching it. He's like, oh, I, I could I can just read. And I was like, <laughs> well, if you just read, who the hell am I going to talk to about it? Come on, man. I started it last night, Heather. I just watched the first episode. <laughs> yeah, my friend Bethany was saying, I'll watch it and we can talk about it together. <laughs> like... I'll connect yeah. us as a group on Messenger because peeps yeah. are important for bisexuals. We've learned yeah. this from Heather today. So I'm just going to create a group for all of us bisexuals who want to discuss trashy TV. And if <laughs> any of you out there who are listening want to be part of that group, please just send us a message on Instagram and we will add you. We'll add you to the community of bis who like shit TV shows. <laughs> I I started Farmer Once a Wife last night, and so I don't really know if I'm okay. (laughs) I haven't heard of that. I've I've watched the Australian version, but there's a new American version, and I watched the first episode last night. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I feel like it's just watching a deconstructed Hallmark movie, because isn't that what happens in every (laughs) single Hallmark movie? There's like a farmer from a small town and then the big city girl shows up and then they eventually get married. Isn't that what happens in every single movie? There was one like there was one quote where he was like, why, why would you want to come out to Oklahoma to the middle of nowhere? (laughs) She's like, it doesn't matter where I am. It's who I'm with. I mean, it's so drama. I was just like, yeah, give it a minute when you can't get a Starbucks or whatever. And you're like on the first plane back to Chicago or wherever she's from. Oh, man. Heteronormativity. It's a trip. (laughs) (laughs) Shall we ask some questions, some frequently asked questions that we have here? I think we asked some of them. Yes, we did ask some of them. but. Heather, how are you okay uh, not fitting into the traditional mold of what you should be? I'm not. No, I'm just joking. (laughs) (laughs) I am deeply not okay 90% of the time. I don't know if that has anything to do with being bisexual, but it's causation, not causality. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Correlation, not causality. I don't know. Uh, No, I'm... I, I. I like kind of being, I don't know, who I am. And I feel so much better in the last few years uh, just being able to express that in a more like outward way. I used to feel weird if I felt like I had, like I used to be like, oh, I feel like this really masculine energy coming from me and I don't know what it is and it would freak me out. And, And now I have like an outfit type that I call like lesbian dog walker. And I'm like, and I'm like, oh, I'm really putting that energy out there. And my daughter will always be like, do I look gay enough? You know, as I have a bi daughter too. And, and she's out. So it's okay <laughs> that she, she would not be mad at me for saying that. I have two daughters. So just try to pick which one, but I don't know. I, I, I know that I have talked a lot about the lack of community, but I think you can, gives me the opportunity to find like a chosen family that While it is a little bit harder to find, it feels more like home than my family of origin ever did. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was told by someone that if I got an undercut, that I would be more easily identifiable as a bisexual and I'd find my community. 
Well, how committed are you? I'm not at all about getting an undercut. I had one. <laughs> It was awful. It took years it, to grow out. Yeah, it feels like a very high maintenance thing to do. It is, yes. And I am not into the high maintenance. I had it I before like I... it was gay. Oh. Were you like <laughs> a skater like, girl? Hipster. Are you a skater girl? I, I hipster. 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 <laughs> I feel like I'm but, doing good to wash my hair 90% of the time, so any upkeep more than that is too much. Yeah, yeah. I have thin hair too, so it just it didn't work. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. But, but did did more more women hit on you? No, I even had designs in the back. Like that's pretty gay. Oh wow! <laughs> I think we you have to wear the shirt that Sylvie has. It's, a it's the life. only tried and true way. <laughs> I don't know any other way that's more direct uh, or effective. I'm gonna wear that shirt and report back on Please. what happens. Yes, <laughs> I'm. I want to know. <laughs> I want it. The public wants to know. Everyone <laughs> needs to know. Yeah, hopefully nothing violent happens. You know, just walk into a bar wearing that shirt, see what see what the reactions are. But um, probably yeah. oh, what would happen was just more men would hit on you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is the unfortunate reality. They're like, oh, I'll bring you home to my wife, and then uh, yeah, with, then I'll have two women. Ooh. Yeah, nothing like fetishizing a bi woman. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, oh, yeah. And we wanted to ask as well. Are straight people welcome to ask you questions, Heather? Are you open to that? I know that you're always very open to bisexual women reaching out um, to ask for support. Are you open to straight people contacting you and asking uh, questions about bisexual women in heterosexual relationships? And if so, how can people contact you? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I think they're are people in the community who can take kind of on the job of educating the community. Not everybody should have to, I think it should be a choice, but it is a choice that I feel like I've made. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to talk about it. And in my talk back in March, there was a older straight man and he said, well, can heterosexuals come to your sexual identity support group? And I was like, well, I feel like if a heterosexual came to a queer sexual identity support group, they might not be entirely heterosexual. So, you know, they might be questioning some things there. So it's it's like, I'm always open for any, for conversations. I have an Instagram that I don't post on because I have a million other irons in the fire in my life right now, being in grad school and having five children, but I do keep track of it and answer questions on it. So if you want to drop the handle. It's out of bedlock. Okay. I love it. My husband insisted. I think I also have a Twitter, but I would not know how to access that. <laughs> so. I'm not even sure Elon Musk knows how to access it at this point, to be honest. My husband is a, a like an ads guy, data, and he's into all that stuff. And so he created a website. I have a website. I have a Instagram. I have a Twitter. I have a Facebook also out of bedlock. All of it's out of bedlock out of bedlock.com, out of bedlock, Facebook, whatever you do there. But I but I just have never Twittered in my life and I wouldn't even know where to begin. Twittered. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> do not Twitter at Heather. That is I the... used to be, I used to want to be divisive and say, oh, I don't twat. But <laughs> um, that's just me being a pain. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we love you in all of your pain and bisexuality and every aspect of you Heather thank you so much for joining us and sharing your research with us today yeah thank you so much I really appreciate this was a great conversation we had so many laughs together yes (laughs) and thank you to all of our amazing and patient listeners uh, for (laughs) tuning in to this conversation where basically three bi women in straight relationships just group therapied in front of all of you Uh, Thanks for processing that with us and for tuning into the Sex Ed for the Modern Bed show. If you are looking for more ways to connect and access info, just get social with us. Tara, tell us how to do that. Well, we are on Instagram. You can DM us. (laughs) Slide into the DMs. 
Uh, our show Instagram is the dot sex ed dot show. And our individual ones are for me, Tara, sex ed for the modern bed. And for Sylvie, sex and sensibility with the E in sex being a three. Got to clarify that. So until next time, claim your pleasure, own your body and stay in presence.